We're standing here at the analytical lab at the La Selva Biological Station in Costa Rica, and it's June 18th, 2010. And we're getting ready to film a new series of fern blog clips for the fern blog. Um, and what this series is going to be about is the wonderful research of Eddie Watkins. And Eddie is a professor at Colgate University, but Eddie's been a major feature of the La Selva landscape since about 1998, when he was first here on an OTS course, which is when I first met him. Eddie did his PhD work here at La Selva on canopy and terrestrial ferns. He was actually a student at the University of Florida, but he spent a lot of time here. And then he did a postdoc at Harvard University and continued his tropical fern work here. And now he's a professor at Colgate and he brought three of his students from Colgate down to work with him on these fern projects. So I'd like to introduce uh, first Eddie Watkins and his three students, Mike Britton, who's the guy who just came in from the field. He's all dirty and muddy and wet, so he looks very authentic. And he will tell you about his project too. I'll let them introduce themselves and their project. And then uh, Wes Testo is another of the Colgate students working with Eddie here this summer. And then Rich Merkhofer is the third student. And so I'm just going to turn the proceedings over to Eddie. This is really exciting, cutting edge gametophyte ecology and desiccation tolerance <laughs> biology. And we love this kind of work here at La Selva. So, here we go. Okay, I'm Eddie Watkins, and I'm a professor at Colgate University in upstate New York. And I'm here working on some research uh, funded through the Picker Interdisciplinary Institute at, at Colgate University. And we have a number of projects going on, uh, but the most important of which, the largest of which, is exploring the world of desiccation tolerance in ferns. And uh, ferns, uh, plants in general, have one task, and that one task is to reproduce. In order to reproduce, uh, plants have to be happy. And what makes them happy is plenty of light, water, nutrients, and carbon dioxide. And when you look at plants, most people think about photosynthesis. That's what we learn in school, and that's what, the, sort of the, what produces oxygen, and we think of that as being a critical part of, of the, uh, the ecosystem. But what goes underlooked oftentimes is the role of water. And not only the role of water, but how plants get water, how they take up water, how they store water, and importantly, what they do during periods of low water availability. So during periods of drought or, or even more extreme. So the work in my lab at Colgate really focuses on understanding how plants cope with periods of water stress. And so to understand that, really, there are two concepts. We, uh, this should be clear. The concept of drought and the concept of desiccation, which are two very fundamentally different things. Drought is a notion of some sort of metabolic inhibition or depression in metabolic rate during periods of extreme, or during periods of water stress. Desiccation is the notion of losing all metabolically active water, so essentially going into some anhydrobiotic state and uh, being in that state, that's desiccation. Uh, what's interesting about that is some plants can recover from that experience. They're called desiccation tolerance plants. They can tolerate plants. They can lose all their internal water and recover. What's interesting is ferns um, play a pivotal role in our understanding of desiccation tolerance because they have two independent free living life stages, stages the gametophyte life stage and the sporophyte life stage. And what my previous work has shown is that the gametophyte generation is remarkably desiccation tolerant, whereas the sporophyte generation uh, is not. But my lab at Colgate University really focuses on understanding the, the world of plant desiccation tolerance by using ferns as a model system. And in future fern blogs, you'll learn more about the ecophysiology of this process from Weston Testo and about the biochemistry and molecular biology uh, from Richard Merkhofer.